joining me here on console, uh, Kirk Costello. He's one of our assistant ISS program scientists for national research. Uh, Kurt uh, has a tremendous amount of insight in all the science going on on board. So first off, Kurt, tell us a little bit about what your position is. How, do you, how are you supporting the International Space Station? Sure, Dan, thanks. Um, we work to advise the ISS program manager on the science uh, that's being selected and flown to the mm -hmm. ISS. We also handle the integration of priorities for all of our different sponsors, whether that's uh, science coming from NASA or CASIS, our, our new uh, uh, Center for Advancement of Science in Space. Okay, and then let's dive right into the science. I mean, just, just today on board we have uh, astronauts lighting things on fire for the BASS experiment. We have uh, the advanced colloids thing going on. Tell us a little bit about all the multidisciplinary stuff taking place on board the station. That's right, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's a great point. It, in very few places on Earth do you have a biology lab sitting right next to a combustion furnace, sitting right next to an Earth observation window. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got so many different types of science going on board the ISS that it really is a unique opportunity to be able to combine those and think think of not only research in one particular field, but also multidisciplinary research. Uh, so like you pointed out, we've got uh, combustion going on today. Well, one of the things that, that comes up is how are we going to utilize our resources in space? Uh, how are we going to uh, utilize our own fuels and foods? Um, interesting crossovers can happen when you start considering uh, mm -hmm. what we can do with biological experiments in uh, growing plants, for instance, on board, and then actually processing those plants for both food and fuel. Uh, in the future, that may be a capability that we look into, and it's enabled by the fact that we have multidisciplinary facilities on board the space station. Okay, and you had mentioned that crossovers can happen, and I know you had written a blog post recently that was on NASA.gov where you talked about how it's kind of a melting pot and they can come together to accomplish the same goals a lot of times. Can you talk about some of the experiments that almost kind of use the same equipment and end up working in conjunction? Sure. Uh, one of the experiments that we have on board is Earth Camp, and mm -hmm. that's an experiment where uh, high school students actually take Earth observation photos of the Earth through an automated camera system. Well, we also have another experiment in a completely different field of physics, fluid physics, uh, the BCAT experiment, mm -hmm. so binary colloid experiment. That's a fluid physics experiment, and you wouldn't think it has much to do with Earth observation, but we f what we found out is that by using the EarthCam cameras, which can be automated and uh, programmed to take pictures and sequences over time, mm -hmm. we were able to cut out a lot of the crew time involved in the very manual BCAT uh, procedures, the original procedures. So by combining those two experiments, taking the EarthCam camera and using it for BCAT, we're able to accomplish a lot more of the objectives of the BCAT investigation uh, just through using uh, that synthesis of Earth observation technologies and uh, the, the BCAT experiment. And you kind of mentioned you guys just kind of found that out as you were going along. Have there been any instances where maybe people on the ground or the astronauts up in space were working with an experiment and they just kind of go, hey, why don't we do it this way, and something totally new comes out of it? That, that's a great point. There's not only the various disciplines that we have on the space station. We have the experience of our crew members, mm -hmm. which are <laughs> greatly coveted, I think, by everyone yep. here. And they come with different backgrounds. So not all of them have the same background. One might have a biology background, one might have a physics background. Well, uh, when it comes to BCAT, uh, one of the things Don Pettit did while, while he was up there is he was having difficulty finding uh, the colloid clumps in that BCAT experiment. Mm -hmm. And so in conjunction with working with the PI on the ground, he was able to set up a, a system, because he has some training in engineering and, and optics, uh, to actually use a scattering phenomena to find the edges of those, to know when they were in the field of view of the camera. And again, that assisted us in getting the data back down to the investigator on the ground. Okay, and we got a lot of really cool things taking place on board the station right now, and everything's really starting to ramp up, everything's really starting to go full speed. What are some of the really cool things that, you know, might be coming up in the future soon? 
Well, we mentioned plant growth. Uh, right now, uh, to date, we've had the option to grow pretty small plants in mm -hmm. our uh, investigations on board. Either uh, the seedling growth uh, experiment you might be familiar with it grows uh, very small shoots and, and uh, seedlings. But in the future, we're looking at having a much larger plant capability. There is a, an investigation coming up called Veggie, mm -hmm. uh, which will be uh, growing larger plants. And we're working right now on a large plant growth habitat, which, uh, or an advanced plant habitat, which will give us the capability to grow even larger species, to do some of that assessment on uh, what the effects of growing uh, food crops and larger crops in orbit are. So a lot of really cool experiments coming up, a lot of really cool stuff taking place right now. Kurt, thanks so much for coming on with me real quick, giving us a lot of really great insight into the science taking board, place on board station. Uh, and if you guys ever want to check out more about station science, you can always check it out on our website at www.nasa.gov station. Kurt, thanks. Thank you very much, Dan.